Hello everyone, welcome to JTOG Extra Time. My name is Stuart Smith and I'm here to give you a wrap up of what happened last night or Wednesday night whenever you may be watching this in J2. Just me this week, John Steele has been uh, graciously given the midweek off because we've got another set of games uh, next Sunday and another set of games next Wednesday as well so we need to ration our energy and appearance fees as well so um, just me so let's get on and let's start to review the game so uh, we'll start at the top and all three of the top three played and they played at home and they all won we'll start at the very summit with Tokushima Vortis they won 2-0 uh, at home against Tochigi SC. This game was nil-nil at half time, but an own goal and a header from Yuki Kakita, his uh, 13th of the season, a very productive season uh, for him, gave Tokushima the win that keeps them clear at the top. Uh, they're still three points clear of Avispa Fukuoka, who themselves won 3 1 at home against FC Ryukyu. In this game, Yuya Yamagishi scored his first two goals for the club since his move from Montedio Yamagata. It has to be said, though, that um, his first one should have been ruled out for handball. It was one of the most egregious uh, misses or miscarriages of, of justice from a referee I've seen this year in J2. Uh, Yamagishi almost caught the ball before going on to hit it into the back of the net. His second goal um, was much better. A clean take and a prodded finish past Danny Carvajal. And a header from Kamijima made it 3-0 before a, a very late consolation goal from Keita Tanaka put Ryukyu on the scoreboard. But it was a very important win for Avispa because Vivar and Nagasaki themselves had a very good night at the Transcosmos Stadium. They beat the hapless Fajiano Okaima by five goals to nil. A couple of goals for uh, Ryo Makida here and goals for Edgar Jr., of course. And the first in a very long time for Victor Ibarbo meant that uh, Nagasaki won five nil and they keep up the pressure at the top of the league. Speaking of the top of the league, let's have a look at the table right now. So here we can see Tokushima at uh, top of the league, and um, yeah, they are three points clear of Avispa Fukuoka, who in turn are two points clear of Viva and Nagasaki. But Nagasaki's big win against Okayama has put their goal difference in a very, very good looking position uh, in the current scheme of things. So before we have a look at the um, the rest of um, the upcoming fixtures for this weekend, let's have a look at all the other results from J2's midweek round. Uh, Montedio Yamagata beats uh, Omiya Ardija by two goals to one. Um, another goal for Vinicius Araujo in this one set them on their way. Uh, Giravansky Takushu got back to winning ways as they beat Ehime FC three goals to one. Um, Daigo Takahashi and Akira Disano on the score sheet in this particular game. Van Fori Kolfu had a good 2 0 win against Mito Hollyhock. It's very rare that Hollyhock remain off the score sheet, but Van Fori Kolfu managed it. And uh, a Dudu header set Kolfu on their way in this game. Uh, at the Yamaha Stadium, uh, Chong Tese put Alberex Niigata ahead in this one, only for Lulinia to equalize with a header in additional time. Uh, speaking of late goals, Haruya Ide slammed in a very, very good last minute winner for Tokyo Verdi as they took all three points from Sanga Stadium. Um, in this game, uh, Kyoto Sanga forward Peter Utaka hit his 20th goal of a highly productive campaign. Um, Jeff United, the ever unpredictable Jeff United, uh, won 3-2 away at Matsumoto Yamaga. Uh, Serginho scored twice for the host, but an additional time winner from Kengo Kawamata uh, saw Jeff rebound from their abysmal performance on 
Sunday against Montedio Yamagata. And finally, two 1 0 home wins to speak of. Matida Zelvia saw off Reno for Yamaguchi 1 0. And Mutsuki Kato carried on his excellent season as he scored the only goal in the game where Zweig and Kanazawa beat Zaspa Kusatsuguma 1 0. Okay, so that's a very brief roundup of. Um, what transpired in, uh, oh, sorry, I should say on Wednesday. Um, but now we can kind of look forward to the fixtures this weekend. And yeah, we have a, a very good selection of fixtures this weekend. I think highlighted by the two o'clock kickoff in Yamagata, where Montero Yamagata, who are playing really well at the moment, they host top of the table Tokushima Vortis. This will be a very, very difficult test for Vortis if they can come through this with three points um, you'd have to think that the arrow is looking very much up in their favor uh, when we talk about automatic promotion the other automatic promotion candidates um, have very winnable games on their schedule uh, Avispa Fukuoka travelled to Renofa Yamaguchi Renofa are really struggling right now and Viva and Nagasaki host FC Ryukyu um, yeah, Nagasaki have such an array of firepower now. It's going to be difficult to see uh, Ryukyu getting anything from that game. Elsewhere, there's some interesting games. Um, Niigata hosts the ever unpredictable Jeff United. Um, Fajiano Okayama will be looking to rebound from their pathetic showing in Nagasaki when they welcome Jubilo Iwata to the City Light Stadium. Giravansky Takushi will look to carry on their, their winning run as they host Tochigi SC. And Ormia, who are in the midst of a horrible season, um, they host Swagen Kanazawa at the NAC 5. So there you are. A very brief but hopefully concise roundup of the midweek happenings in J2. Um, hopefully John and I will be back together next week when we want to bring you another update from the uh, from the Sunday games and yeah until then enjoy the football stay safe and we'll speak to you next time but in the meantime goodbye for now